I've always been fascinated by taking pictures of the night sky, especially of the Milky Way. And at the same time, I feel that this is one of the more difficult genres of nature photography, um, because there are so many things that just need to match in order to get the picture. So first of all, you need to know where and when you can actually see the Milky Way. Then you need to have clear skies, obviously. And then there is all the technical aspects, like which camera, which lens should you use. And even if you pick a good, suitable, combination for your photography you still need to know about the right settings and finally like with all kind of photography you need a good image composition a good foreground before this night sky so today i'm trying to cover all these in this tutorial So when and where can you actually see the Milky Way? Well, this might depend a bit on the region where you live, but in the Northern Hemisphere, the summer months are best. And for Central Europe, at least, like something like mid-May until the be beginning of September is what I find works best for me. And you will see that the time during the day when you or during the night when you can take pictures of the Milky Way is also shifting a bit through the year and also the position of the Milky Way. So in the beginning of the year, it's like this bow is rather, uh, this arch is rather flat, whereas towards the end of the season, it's more a straight line all the time. So you might need to see a bit here. There are some useful apps like both for the computer and for the smartphone, like Photopilt, Stellarium and so on, that can really help you to plan with this. And to see not only the bright stars, but also the more dim ones in the Milky Way, you need to be in a quite dark location. And there are some maps that can help you to find dark locations in your region. Uh, again, in mid of Europe, middle of Europe, it's not so easy, but here in the Swiss Alps, it's not too bad, but I dream of other regions like South America, Australia, the United States and so on. And I would also have a look at Google Maps or something to see if there might be any houses in the background that could be in the picture. And maybe if you are passing the region the night before or a week before, already have a quick look before you're planning to come with all your camera equipment. I had this in holidays before that I scouted for a location. It looked great during the day. And then when I came back in the night, I just saw some lights that were basically ruining my shots. And even if you have found a suitable location, there is still the problem that sometimes the moon is just giving too much light. So anything above 30% of moon uh, is for my taste a bit too much. Today we're around zero. This is basically perfect for the shots I'm planning to take with these trees and everything in the background. But a little bit of moon, I need to say, can also be nice. Something like 15% just to fill a bit of, to give a bit of light give some light and shadows and illuminate the foreground a bit more. And this should go without saying, but go when it's really the darkest in the night. So this is not like now, it's half an hour or 40 minutes after sunset. Go two to three hours after sunset, un sunset until two to three hours before sunrise. Um, I realized that uh, in some regions of the world in summer, this is quite a, t a small time window. And this is one more reason why I recommend to scout a bit before, ideally already during another night, but at least during the day to already find your composition, you realize where you want to set the camera and everything. And one thing I almost forgot is, of course, you need to make sure that there are no clouds that are blocking your view in the Milky Way. Uh, at the moment there are still some, but they should disappear in like one hour ago, which would be quite good timing. And I also need to say one or two tiny clouds can look quite good. In my opinion, they can improve the image, but too many will just not look good. You don't see much of the Milky Way anymore. And a problem is also if these clouds are somehow above a big city because then they get illuminated from below and they are quite yellow and orangish. And this just doesn't look so good in my opinion. So let's talk a bit about the equipment for night photography. Um, first of all, the camera. So I think here a full frame camera really pays off because compared to an APS-C camera, you have a sensor which is more than twice the size. And this just means more than twice the light can go in and we need all the light we can get. So here I have my R5, but if you have an R6, that's even better actually, it's better in low light, or a 5D Mark IV, 5D Mark III, 6D, 6D Mark II, and so on. And the same, of course, for the equivalent Nikon and Sony cameras. Any more or less um, modern full-frame camera would be my weapon of choice here, if possible. 
and then I would try to couple this with a wide angle lens that is as fast as possible. So here I have the uh, Samyang 24mm f1.4. It's an all manual lens, meaning the focus is manual, but even the aperture ring, it's a physical ring here on the lens that is manual. For me, no problem here at all, and it was at a reasonable price. And for astrophotography, it's outperforming the Canon equivalent. And then if I want to include a bit more of the foreground or more Milky Way, I also have my monster lens here. It's the Sigma 40mm f1.8. I bought this a couple of years after this one. I bought it used, luckily. It's still quite expensive, quite big. But if I want to cover a bit more, it's quite nice. I need to say though, um, if you want to capture a bigger scene and you only have one of these lenses or something in the 24, 28 millimeter range, you can also do a panorama and stitch it together in post. So this should not stop you from taking great pictures. And since we are dealing with quite long shutter speeds, you will need a tripod and one that is sturdy enough to hold the camera lens combination. I need to say it's not as critical anymore as in the, let's say one tenth to one second range where the shutter shock sometimes could really cause the whole image to blur but i would still make sure that it's sturdy um, and for the tripod I had the same i once had a workshop with a client who just recently bought a new tripod and the new tripod head but it was a bit too cheap and too lightweight for the camera and lens she used and all images got blurry during the night shot so that's just a pity and nice if you can avoid this it's getting darker so we should get prepared and the first thing we want to do is basically find a good composition again ideally you should already have some idea during the day and now it's helpful that it's not completely dark so i can still see a bit i put the camera in a vertical position now because i want to have the lake and the well the sky and the reflection of the lake and here an l bracket can definitely help but it also works without on most tripod heads and what I'm doing now is first of all find the composition and set the focus. So I'm going to manual mode and just put a really high ISO. So let's say 51,000, shutter speed of like half a second or something. And then I just take one picture. Um, look how it looks like from the composition. Okay, I will adjust it a tiny bit, but it's actually not even too bad in my opinion. Um, then I zoom all the way in with the magnifier because yeah, this lens has no autofocus so I need to zoom in and focus manually. So what I'm doing is focusing somewhere in the sky to the stars and then just turning the focus wheel a bit until um, the scars are not a big blurry mess anymore but rather small and defined dots. And I take another test shot and one tip here is to activate the focus peaking because actually at least on my camera, then I already see that the stars are marked with the small red outline as well as the horizon line. So surprised how much the camera picks up here. So this looks quite good for now. Now that we have set up our composition and adjusted the focus, I now want to set up the proper uh, camera settings for actually taking the pictures after and here's some changes I want to do So first of all, I want to lower my ISO for having better image quality So I will change the ISO in a bit, but first I will adjust the shutter speed so I don't uh, need to have one third of a second I can now have a much longer shutter speed How long? Well, this depends on the lens um, On my 24 millimeter lens, I made quite good experiences with like something like 13 seconds with 15 or 20 I started to already see how earth was moving and how the stars started to make small trails which I didn't like so much with my 14 millimeter since it's wider I can go a bit longer up to 20 seconds or something like this um, there was for a long time this 600 rule meaning the time you need you can take pictures in seconds is 600 divided by your focal length However, I found, especially with the high resolution cameras and maybe I'm a bit uh, pixel peeping, but I prefer really to have smaller dots rather than larger trails. So for me, I changed it a bit to a 300 rule. So 300 by 24 millimeter. I forgot what exactly this gives. I think 12 and a half seconds. So this is uh, close enough to 13. So I'm dialing in um, 13 seconds and I just realized I put in one thirteenth of a second. This happens if I talk and do stuff at the same time. Um, so that's that. For the white balance, you can always adjust this in post. I actually find the 
daylight setting is not even the worst sometimes i like it a bit cooler and again you can change it at post in post but i prefer to have a like a rough idea already here so what i'm doing is now is changing it to like something like 4500 kelvin gives me a bit more a bluish look and then i already mentioned i want to reduce the iso how low can i go well depends how much ambient light you have because i would never underexpose the image and afterwards push it up in post this is not ending well so from my experience thir uh, 13 sec seconds um, right now it's not completely dark so i think 3200 iso could be a good starting point so um, before i actually take the picture there is a couple of more things i want to change i'm sorry for this so first you want to make sure that the high iso noise reduction is on i would not put this on all the time already um, what it's doing is basically once you take one shot it's taking a second shot with the closed shutter a so-called black shot i think or dark frame that's the term in english and what this is useful for um, basically noise is to a certain degree a random pattern but some some pixels always stay in the same place and if you take a second picture with the exact same conditions but completely black you know that most or part of this noise that you see is actually noise and you can and the camera then subtracts that from the pro, uh, former image so i need to think again where this was it was somewhere in the shooting menu of course it depends on the camera but i'm shooting here with the canon r5 and here it's on the fourth one so i set this long exposure noise reduction to on and before i take my first image i also want to change the drive mode i don't want to cause any blur or something so i put when i press the camera so i put two seconds self timer and just an information the electronic shutter is not working here on the r5 or r6 this is only working until to i think half a second but now we're at 13 seconds so i need to do it like this i have now two seconds i should have cover at least this one and afterwards when i'm taking the real shots i will also turn out the big lamp otherwise this is not ending well so after 13 seconds you will not see the picture you will see a screen that says busy because it's doing this dark frame and now it's finished and i look at the result and i don't like it so much <laughs> the clouds are really a bit yellowish um, and it i don't see so many stars um, this is just due to the fact that of course it's still a bit too bright so we need to wait a bit more and this is exactly what i will do now just wait here a bit and turn off the big light wait for it to get darker and then take pictures some final remarks i didn't even mention it but obviously shoot your lens wide open uh, it just gives you the maximum amount of light and we really need this here and then i would also recommend taking several pictures because there might be some satellites airplanes or um, helicopters crossing the picture um, which doesn't look so nice and also if you shoot like here with a reflection in the lake in some shots the reflection might not just be there it might be blurry so having several shots might help and also if you want to stack them in post to get a bit better image quality it's good or you need to have several images and this directly leads me to my next question would you be interested in a tutorial of how i edit these files nothing crazy and going wild with the colors but just to get the most out of the files to get the best image quality also if you want to print a bit larger to, to deal with the noise and so on if yes let me know down in the comments and also another question when i was planning to do this video i thought it would be kind of cool to start in the twilight and let it fade laterally into the night but then i realized how difficult it was with the lightning uh, with the artificial light with making sure that we still see something of the background which is not now not the case anymore so if i would ever do another video like this about night photography maybe about star trails or something similar would you prefer to do it that i do it basically the same as now or should i rather pre-shoot some of the um, footage maybe in the garden or in the forest during daylight where it's a bit easier to see let me know in the comments thanks for watching if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up and if it was really helpful for you maybe consider giving me a super thanks of course this even helps me more